where did my ancestors come from? That's the questions that many people starting genealogy research ask themselves. Well, in this video, I'm sharing resources, tips, and tricks on how to find out where your ancestors came from. Hey there, I'm Lisa with Are You My Cousin? And this genealogy YouTube channel is designed to help you find your ancestors, grow your family tree, but not get overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you're in the right place. Now today's episode is sponsored by newspapers.com, the largest online newspaper archive. Are you captivated by stories of the past? Newspapers.com is like a time machine. Dive into their extensive online archive to explore history as it happened. With over 800 million digitized newspaper pages spanning three centuries, newspapers.com provides an unparalleled gateway to the past. For listeners of this video, newspapers.com is extending a discount of 20% off on a publisher's extra subscription. Just use the code, are you my cousin at checkout? Uncover the extraordinary from newspapers.com today. I will have that code down in the description below as well. I started my genealogy research years ago. I was a college student studying in London and my family had asked me to look up my ancestral line that had come, as we assumed, from England. So I took myself off to the London archives to see what I could find out. I was ushered into a beautifully ornate room where I got to meet with a gentleman there. And he asked me a very important question when I told him why I was there. He said, who was your immigrating ancestor? In other words, who was my ancestor who had left England and gone to America to live? Well, I didn't know. I actually knew very little about the family other than that we had probably come from, from England. So this gentleman politely informed me that until I knew who the immigrating ancestor was, that my answers were going to be found in the United States and that I needed to start my search there and not in England. Now, I admitted to feeling a bit foolish and embarrassed at that, but he made a very good point. Until I knew who the immigrating ancestor was, I needed to be focusing my research in the United States, not in England. In other words, we cannot research our immigrant ancestor abroad unless we knew who they were and what their life was like here in the United States. We need to identify those generations here in America. We need to understand as much as we can about their lives here in America because oftentimes in their, um, their records here in the U.S., we will find clues, if not the direct answer, to where an ancestor immigrated from. I often say that I need to know my ancestor so well and at such a level that if they were to knock on my door, front door this afternoon, I would actually recognize them if I opened the door. And we need to understand our immigrant ancestor at that level so that then we can start to have a chance of finding the records abroad. What kinds of records and clues can we use to learn more about our immigrating ancestor? Now, one of the first record collections you want to go to would be to look at the census records. Now, this might seem a bit obvious, but a census records frequently will tell us where an ancestor was born. And that can give us a clue right there where they might have immigrated from. Additionally, some of the census years will actually tell us where their parents were born, where the father was born and where the mother was born. And that can give us some solid clues as to what country an ancestor immigrated from. And then we can begin making that, that search then. Now, before you leave your ancestor census records, be sure and seek out and follow their children through the census records. The 1930 census for Israel listens daughter, adult daughter, provided clues to Israel's birthplace. Her parents' birthplaces, that of Israel and his wife Dora, had said Russia. There was a line written through their place of birth and above it was written Lithuania. That was a valuable clue in the search for where this family originated. Remember, countries' boundaries may have changed over time due to wars and politics. So the Russia that Israel had originally said was his place of birth was in fact Russia at the time he was born, but was Lithuania at the time that his daughter was giving the information. Now, if a census record indicates that your ancestor was naturalized, you want to then obviously seek out the naturalization records. Now, unfortunately for me, as I've been in the search for that ancestor Israel listen and his naturalization papers, I have not found them yet. I do recommend that you check out the immigration record pages at NARA, the National Archives, for more information so that you can understand the evolution of naturalization process and the records that were generated over, uh, over time. If you enjoy learning how to trace your immigrant ancestors, be sure to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. That way you will be notified each time Are You My Cousin uploads a new video here on the channel. Okay, make sure that in our search, we're going to be searching for ship passenger list, obviously. Now, continuing the search into the immigrating ancestor Israel Listen, I found that the 19th 
1900 census stated that he arrived in America in 1886. I did a search for passenger list arriving in 1886 and success. I was able to find him arriving. Now, one thing, if you are struggling to find your information on your ancestor in a ship passenger list, turn to the newspapers. The newspapers of the time could often re report on arriving passengers. And these newspaper clippings can provide context, details not found in the official records. Here's an example I found on newspaper.com in the San Francisco Column Post from July of 1913. They can include passenger names, the ship's name, and even a brief, a brief description of the voyage. This is especially true in the unfortunate case of, say, a shipwreck, or if a ship encountered a large storm. These types of incidents were often documented and lists of survivors and or passengers who maybe did not survive will be listed out. When more traditional records do not provide the answers that we are seeking for in the search for our ancestors, we need to look closely at their community and at their, at their place of worship because oftentimes immigrants coming over were following family members or members from their community. They sought out houses of worship that were similar to theirs they created their own newspapers, even in their mother tongue, that would provide information about back home and about passengers who were arriving and perhaps trying to find family members already here in America. So you should absolutely include local newspapers to get that context about what your immigrant ancestor was experiencing and to perhaps pick up on the clues for where for family members who were still back at home. Now, there are other resources that you can absolutely explore to learn more about finding out your immigrant ancestor. The main genealogy databases all have their own blogs. Find My Past is an excellent blog if you're looking for those English ancestors who might have immigrated over. You can also check out the immigration records on the National Archives website, the NARA website. And again, they will it provides a good history and progression of how what the records were early on and how they evolved over time as the times changed and as laws changed. So that is a really good basis if you take a few minutes up front to familiarize yourself with the time period that your ancestor may have been immigrating in and what was being required for the passenger list, for naturalization, and what how their life might have looked when they landed in America. Now if you're struggling to find your ancestors, watch the video on the screen now entitled Can't Find Your Ancestors? why your genealogy plan is not working.